how's it going guys so I think tomorrow should be an interesting day um, my friend Ari and I <clears throat> are probably going to be interviewing uh, Rabbi Kesson so watch out for that look out for that um, I haven't been on air with my friend Frank Zelenko because he has, <coughs> excuse me, he recently had a baby, Baruch Hashem, Mazel Tov, and, um, you know, Dr. Zelenko, um, is obviously having his, his, uh, health issues, and, um, you know, Frank is basically tending to that as well, so we're kind of just uh, taking a bit of a break from the podcast, Uh, yeah, you know guys, I've been thinking a lot about this whole thing with, um, before I go on, I just want to say, Rufus Lame, I want to dedicate this video to Dr. Zlenko. Uh, Velvel Wolf Zev Ben Leia for you know speedy recovery full refua. So I've just been thinking about this whole thing of uh, this whole issue, um, you know, with Roe versus Wade and everything that's going on in America. You know, guys, the problem is, um, you know. Obviously, we know where the Torah stands and where Shem stands on the issue. We know that. However, there are are kind of complicated halachas, complicated laws when it comes to this. At least in Judaism, right? If the mother's uh, life is in danger, you're not only allowed to perform an abortion, you are actually recommended to, you're, you're, it's almost like you're ordered to, and so, you know, we have a situation now in America where, you know, already the people on one side of the political spectrum believe in absolutism, meaning, meaning no abortion under any circumstances, right? And they believed that for a while. You know, you're talking about the Christians. The Christian world. Under any circumstances, it doesn't matter what. Right? And then you have um, the other side of the coin, which is the woke. And the left. And, uh, you know, Hollywood and the media. You know, you, you, you sit down and you can watch uh, these, these, what I call them, the clucking chickens on, you know, that show The View. Right? So... And basically, you know, they've pushed the Overton window, what's called the Overton window, so far to the left, right? It's basically the window of uh, acceptable beliefs, you know, both on the left and on the right, you know, kind of like the extremities. It's basically the the range that uh, is acceptable. Anything to the right of that is you're a crazy person, right? So they pushed that Overton window all the way to the left, to the point where, like, regular leftists are considered normal. Okay, so, like, leftists, leftists are considered crazy, but they're still, like, leftists, so I guess regular leftists don't think they're crazy, and then people on the right wing today are kind of, like, centrists, and then anybody right wing of that, right wing of that is basically a psycho, right? Considered a psycho. So normal people are considered insane, right? People like us. So, so, they've pushed it all the way to the left. And so, any reaction that they were going to get, you know, after 20 years or 30 years of doing, engaging in this crap, sorry to say, any reaction was going to be um, draconian. And, and guys, and you, and you see it now. You see that draconian reaction. You know, it's like that song, Don't Push Me Because I'm Close to the Edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. And, and, and they pushed, and they pushed, and they pushed, and they pushed, and they pushed these people, you know, the people who are normal, who just want to be left alone, 
who actually were happy with, excuse me, <coughs> who were not happy, but who were, who were, you know, just kind of like made their peace with like, I don't know, gay marriage, believe it or not. They made their peace with it. People made their peace with it, you know? <coughs> Sorry, they're just kind of spraying down the chairs here. Ugh. So, and people were okay with it. You know, they were okay with, as long as people weren't shoving things in their face, people, people were okay with it, you know, or people were just like, you know, accepted it, you know, and, and again, this is where we get into this whole thing of approval versus acceptance, you know, people don't approve of what you're doing, but they accept it, right, and so now you've pushed them so far, you know, you've pushed them and you push them and you push them, and now, not only did they do they not approve, they've taken that non-approval into simply not accepting you. Because they could accept you as you were, you know, you know, it's like, it's like, you guys ever see the show Friends, you know, uh, Ross, he goes, you, you're at a 10, I could use you at a 2. We could accept you at a 2. We could accept you at a 5. Right? Or they could. They can't accept you at a 10. They can't. There are limits, ladies and gentlemen. There are just limits to this crap. You understand? And so, you know, the Supreme Court did what it did. And, you know, most people don't really understand, obviously, that, that, that it was not never a law. It was just a ruling, right? Based on a court case that happened in 1974 in Texas where the woman who was suing uh, to be able to have an abortion, lost in Texas, so she brought, she appealed and it went to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court at that time used the mechanism of, uh, you know, right to privacy in order to pass this law, uh, not pass this law, in order to make this ruling, right, which was never a law. And of course the Supreme Court today, a few days ago, went and said, you know, listen, uh, this never should have been ruled on by us in this way. And we're giving it back to the states. And of course, the states are going to do what they're going to do. So now, again, if you want to talk about legal mechanisms, a lot of people will come and say, listen, if you want law, if you want federal law, come and, you know, implore your congressman to write a bill. As much as I don't agree, but if you write a bill and, and, and you, te you, you test this bill, this law in, in Congress, in the halls of Congress, and it passes, then it passes. And the Supreme Court may even uphold it as constitutional. It may even do that, ladies and gentlemen. But you didn't do that. They didn't do that. They just, you know, relied on this thing from the 70s. And now they're crying about how society went back to, I don't know, whatever, the Stone Age. And all the while, they've been pushing society all the way back to Saddam. Right? If they're saying that we want to go back to the 50s, these guys want to go back to, I don't know, <laughs> 2000 BC. If we're, since we're counting, you know, history here. If we're, since, we're, since we're, you know, looking at the calendar of, of uh, you know, what's what here. In terms of societal norms, societal standards. Ladies and gentlemen, you know... I was talking to my family, and, and they were saying, you know, America's not done, right? And a lot of people have it in their heads that uh, we're in the same situation we were, you know, I don't know, late 70s, in the late 70s with Carter. All we need to do is elect, uh, you know, a different president from a different political party, and he's going to fix everything. He's going to fix the economy. He's going to make America great again. He's going to fix all the moral issues and all the foreign policy and all the all the inflation and all the you know whatever it's gonna fix everything ladies and gentlemen we don't live in the carter era we live in the saddam era and you can fix all of those things that i mentioned but you're but you're not unless you fix society at its core moral values those things don't even i don't want to say they don't matter but you've you've put a band-aid even when trump came in in 2016 ladies and gentlemen it was so far down 
the road, all this, you know, just, just depraved stuff that, you know, even Trump was like a product of society. If you look at him, really, and even if you want to say that he's a Balchuva and he's a, he, he, I don't know, repented in some way, shape or form, he's a product of society in many ways, ladies and gentlemen. Again, as much as he fixed this and fixed that, you know, my friend is running. Some of the reactions from the left is crazy, but sometimes I think it's for the lack of words, demonic, or it's like God has simply left some be given over there to, to their nature. Am I off base in this thinking? No, you're absolutely right. Listen, you're absolutely right. This is a spiritual war at this point. It's a spiritual war. Um, and I'm saying that, you know, obviously it, it, it's already, a, if anything, a just a cultural civil war. And it may lead to an actual one. Hasso Shalom. Because, because these people are not, um, you can't appease them. They're incorrigible. You understand? They want others to give them, uh, you know, like uh, throw them a bone, right? They say, nobody wants to take away your gun rights. We just want sensible this. And this is how they start with chipping away and chipping away, chipping away. And on the flip side, when somebody comes and says, well, hey guys, you know, um, you can have your abortions, just not up to three months. And and to them, that's like handsmaid's tale. That's like, I don't know, men deciding their, you know, they didn't, again, a few months ago, they can't even decide, uh, you know, define what a woman is, and all of a sudden they're into women's rights. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to understand something. And I'm going to end with this. Their entire ideology, when they, when these people are, this is this is not a, they're not even people. This is the, this is an entity. The entity is called the Sitra Achra, ladies and gentlemen. And the Sitra Achra, its entire, as we say in French, raison d'être, its entire, like existence, is to go against pu uvu, to go against being fruitful and multiplying. Okay, and so when it talks about um, reproductive rights, ladies and gentlemen, don't believe it for a second because there's no, there's, they, it has nothing to do with repro reproduction, reproducing, or anybody, anything of the sort. Okay, it has everything to do with one thing, ladies and gentlemen. It's called population control. It's very, very upset because one of its weapons in the arsenal of population control has been severely disarmed, severely handicapped which which is abortion right so now but you look at all the other weapons they still have left right what are the other weapons global wars you know all this gender stuff you know where basically you're not going to have normal you know you or they're trying to have, make it so you don't have regular relationships and regular marriage you're talking about um you know things that are made in labs you know what you know what i'm talking about that you know i, I i'm afraid to you know enunciate these things for fear of being canceled for fear of being uh removed here you know artificially fabricated uh you know what um and then and then the supposed remedy for that you know banning and and denying people uh repurposed uh you know what you know stuff that can help them for the you-know-what. Artificially fabricated uh, economic crises. Artificially fabricated inflation. Artificially fabricated race wars. Or, and actual, actual wars, ladies and gentlemen. All of these things, my friends. Social media. You know, addictions to where people like can't socialize properly. Can't have normal relationships. Ladies and gentlemen, all of these things have one thing in common. It's called population control. Okay? It's everything. This is what the Sitra Akhra does. You know? Again, crab, crab cakes and football. It's what Maryland does. This is what the Sitra Akhra does, my friends. And this is where we're at. This has, this has nothing to do with politics anymore or left versus right, my friends. This is a, this is a spiritual force that has come. There are spiritual entities here at play really we've seen it we've seen it over the past two years two and a half years we understand what's going on so those of us who are astute 
enough to look, you see, and we'll, you know, see it really with our eyes wide open, right? This is what it is. And unfortunately, my friends, everything's been pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. And now the people, you know, most of them are not, you know, it, these, this is a Christian, um, so to speak, movement, right? The people who are for God in their own way, you know, it's absolutism. So they're pushing back as hard as they can because they see no other recourse. They see no other option because they're tired of the crap. They're tired of this. They're done. They're done with your with your crap. You understand? You know, I was talking to somebody today. They say, "Well, it's a passing fad. People are going to realize how ruined their children are, and this and that and the other, and it's going to it's going to blow over this whole thing." No, it's not going to blow over. They're not going to stop. Why? Because it's not political. It's spiritual, ladies and gentlemen. And we're right before Mashiach, and the Sitra Akhra is fighting and fighting, and it's dying, and as it's dying, like we always say, it's fighting like hell. And my friends, with all that said. Bizarat Hashem, tomorrow we're going to talk about this and more with Rabbi Kessin. We're also going to talk about, uh, you know, I just, I'm interested to, to hear what he has to say on the matter. Maybe some, some things that I just said to you guys today, but other things that I for sure didn't think of or don't even know, uh, simply because I'm not, you know, a Talmud Chacham like he is. And we're also going to talk about what just happened in Israel with the collapse of the government and what's going to happen going forward because it looks like there might be another stalemate so we'll see or maybe not we don't know so we're going to talk about that and uh yeah guys i mean the world is boiling you understand right and uh don't push people that's all really again they're willing to accept you they don't approve of you if you don't know the, if you don't know the difference then you're that's your first problem but most people are willing to accept you. Americans are very nice people. In general, people are nice people. Unless they're like, you know, Islamic fundamentalists or whatever. <laughs> you know, people are willing to accept others for who they are and what they want to be, do in their lives. They may not approve, but they're willing to accept. But if you push them to accept them more than they're willing to accept, if you push them to be at a 10 when they could use you at a 2, then they don't approve, and then they don't accept. And then we have a problem. Anyway, guys, that's uh, all I had to say about that. In the words of uh, <laughs> my friend Frank likes to say that he got, he got Forrest Gump into what he was doing today. So in the words of Forrest Gump, that's all I have to say about that. And uh, listen, stay safe out there. And uh, anyway, I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, bye, Otto.